What is a mole? So you're studying the quantitative aspects of chemical change, otherwise known as stoichiometry. You're in grade 10, 11, or 12. This video is for you. We will be discussing what a mole is in chemistry. Let's go. What is a mole? A mole is defined as 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23. That's a huge number of some chemical unit, such as atoms, molecules, or ions. But what on earth does this mean? It's very important to understand that chemistry works with a massive, massive amount of tiny, tiny, tiny particles. Therefore, it doesn't make sense for scientists to work with individual atoms. We cannot keep count of individual atoms. Scientists have tackled this problem by introducing the SI unit called the mole. And the mole is the unit for the amount of substance. So if someone says, I have two moles of oxygen. If someone says, I have two moles of sodium, they're telling you that they have a certain amount of oxygen or a certain amount of sodium. So an SI unit is basically like some, a unit that we use to measure something in. So if I say the unit, the SI unit for height is meters, we measure your height in meters. Or we can say the SI unit is kilograms or grams, we measure something in grams, the weight or the mass of something in grams or kilograms. So the SI unit for the amount of a substance is moles. So I can have one mole of a substance or 1.5 moles of a substance or two moles or 20 moles. It tells me the amount of substance, but moles, it's still confusing. I want you to think of it like this. If you are baking and you read a recipe and the recipe says you need a dozen eggs. Okay, that's a lot of eggs, but let's pretend the recipe says you need a dozen eggs. That means you need 12 eggs. So instead of saying 12, we use the word dozen. Instead of saying I need a pair of shoes, instead of saying I need two shoes, we say I need a pair of shoes. A pair means two. So just like a dozen means 12 and a pair means two, a mole means 6.022 times 10 to the 23 particles. So if I say I have one mole, it means I have that many particles. And what I've done is I've written out that number. So 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23. So look at all of these zeros. That is a huge amount of particles. That number of particles, that is one mole. And just to give you an idea of how massive that number is, if we had one mole of donuts, so remember, one mole consists of all of these numbers of particles. That's a huge number. So if I have one mole of donuts, that one mole of donuts will form a layer around the entire circumference of the earth. So remember, an earth circle, circumference is around the circle. It will form a layer around the entire circumference of the earth that is eight kilometers deep. That is huge. If you are asked to define one mole or to define or give the definition of a mole, that is the definition up there. It is the amount of substance that has the same number of particles as there are atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. Now, in earlier chapters in this year, we learned about isotopes. Carbon-12 is an isotope of carbon. 12 is the atomic mass number. It's the mass of this isotope of carbon. So if I have 12 grams, that's the mass, of carbon-12, 12, 12 is the atomic mass number, that gives me one mole. So if I had to take 12 grams of carbon-12, so you take some carbon-12, carbon-12 is a specific isotope of carbon, and you measure out 12 grams. Now I have 12 grams in my hand here, and I had to count out all of the atoms, okay? Pretend we're doing this. We're counting out how many atoms there are in this amount, 12 grams of carbon-12 we would get 6,022 times 10 to the 23 atoms. So that's why it says there 12 grams of carbon-12 contains 6,022 times 10 to the 23 particles or atoms. That is one mole. So the next bullet point says one mole always contains the same number of particles regardless of the substance. So what that means 
If I have one mole of carbon, as I've said already, it means I have 6,023 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon. If I have one mole of sodium, I have 6,023 times 10 to the 23 atoms of sodium. So one mole always contains the same number of particles, that number, regardless of the substance. And that number has a name. It's called Avogadro's number or Avogadro's constant. So Avogadro's number is 6,022 so and so and so times 10 to the 23. We often round it off to this number over here, 6,023. This is just rounded off, but it's called Avogadro's number or Avogadro's constant. Because it was Avogadro that determined that there were that many atoms, that huge number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. That's why we define the mole in that way. That's why it's called Avogadro's number. So how do we calculate moles? Well, it all depends on what you are given. So these formulae come from your data sheet. I copied and pasted it from a data sheet that comes in your final chemistry exam. And as you can see, in each of these formulae, one thing that they have in common is that they have N. And N is the symbol for number of moles. Okay, this one doesn't have it, but these have N. N is number of moles. So if you are asked to calculate the number of moles, you will use either one of these formulae to calculate the number of moles. It depends on what you are given. So if you are given mass of a substance in grams, and you can work out the molar mass using the periodic table, you will use this formula to calculate number of moles. I've included the unit of measurement for all of these variables. However, if you are given concentration and volume of a solution, you use this formula to calculate number of moles n. There's the unit for concentration, moles per cubic decimeter, and volume in cubic decimeters. So if you're given volume of a solution, concentration, you use this formula to calculate number of moles. If you are dealing with gases at STP, you will be given the volume of that gas, hopefully, at STP, measured in cubic decimeters or cubic centimeters, but you'll just convert it. Then you use this formula to calculate number of moles. Vm is molar volume, and at STP, that is 22,4 cubic decimeters. Or, lastly, if you are given number of particles or atoms or molecules, that is big N. This is number of particles. And this over here, Na, is Avogadro's number, which we just discussed what that is. Avogadro's number 6,023 times 10 to the power of 23. We can use this formula to calculate N, baby N. Just keep in mind that baby N is is number of moles. Now, I have videos on every single one of these formulae in the stoichiometry playlist, the quantitative aspects of chemical change playlist. So if you want a video on how to calculate moles using this formula, or a video on how to calculate moles using Avogadro's number and this formula, or working with concentration and solutions, or working with gases at SCP, all of these videos are in this playlist. Check out the link down below. But most importantly, these formulae are used to calculate number of moles. And why do I need to calculate number of moles? Well, first of all, remember, chemists work with a massive amount of particles, a huge, huge, huge number of atoms. It doesn't make sense to work with atoms, so they use the mole. The mole is universally accepted, accepted across the globe, and scientists use it when working with chemical reactions. So say, for example, scientists are producing water in a lab. They're reacting hydrogen gas with oxygen gas to produce water. We work with moles. We say, I want to know how many moles of water will be produced if I react three grams of hydrogen, for example. So we need to know how to work with moles in order to work out how much product can be produced or made, or to work out how much reactant is needed in a chemical reaction. And when working with chemical reactions, such as this one, magnesium and oxygen are my reactants. Those are the two things I react together, and it gives me magnesium oxide, that is my product. This is a chemical reaction. These big numbers that balance the reaction, this tells me the number of moles. So two moles of magnesium, two, reacts with one mole of oxygen, there's an invisible one here, to produce two moles of magnesium oxide. So I need to work with moles when using a chemical reaction. So for example, if the question says, 
I react three grams of magnesium with excess oxygen, calculate how much magnesium oxide I produce. They're giving me information about magnesium. They want to know how much magnesium oxide I produce. In order to go from one substance to another, we need to use something called a mole ratio. What that means is I first need to convert the three grams of magnesium to moles. So we need to go from grams of magnesium to moles of magnesium. Once we know the moles of one thing, we can easily get the moles of something else using a mole ratio. Again, mole ratios is something that I cover in this playlist. So if you want more information about that, please watch the other videos in this playlist. This was just an introductory video to what on earth a mole is. I hoped I cleared up some confusion, but again, there's lots more to still work through. So if you want to know how to calculate moles, using the different formulae I showed in this video and how to use more ratios with chemical reactions, keep watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.